scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. If all we live by are miracles, signs, wonders, as important as they are, we will not be able to experience the fullness of God in our lives because a lot in the kingdom depends on growth and maturity. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Are we together? Make it a culture to always come with something to write. It is important. It is proof of value to the word of God that you have. And so by the grace of God, here we will trust God for grace as much as we experience the manifest hand of God, we will focus very greatly on doctrine, truths that help and mature and establish believers to the end that we become steadfast, not missing in any area. Are we together? Let me give you an example of a few doctrinal truths in the Bible that are worth knowing. Number one, truths that relate to the new birth and redemption. It is important, for instance, that believers understand the entire scope of the work of salvation. You will be amazed at how many believers, and respectfully speaking, even leaders in the body of Christ, who cannot intelligently articulate the work of redemption. It's like a doctor with no knowledge of anatomy, no knowledge of physiology. How did you become a doctor? Are we together now? Yeah. These are foundational truths. Believers have to understand what happened from the beginning. They have to understand the fall of man. They have to understand Jesus as perfect theology. The mystery of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. These are foundational pillars. We may differ in our levels of our approach to ministry, but these are foundational pillars of the Christian faith. If they are not known, we cannot walk in victory. Truths like the identity and the authority of the believer in Christ. Paul as part of his apostolic ministry took out time all through the epistles, especially the book of Ephesians when you read. He took out time to give a very clear exegesis of the truth of God's word to help the believers understand their position in Christ. There is a positional advantage that we have in Christ and believers must understand this. If we do not understand these basic truths, and then you go to deeper and weightier matters of the spirit. You will find out that we become ever learning but never coming into the experience, the knowledge of the truth. This is the tragedy of the average believer. We are not in ignorance, but there is, we have a deluge of spiritual truth whose relevance we cannot point in our lives. We know almost every topic. We know almost every great teaching. But to be able to sequentially arrange them and produce constructive victory in our lives, most times we do not know how to combine them. The concept of sin, the concept of righteousness, the concept of uprightness, the concept of holiness, the concept of salvation, the concept of the gospel. These are very important. I'm just running through very intelligent spiritual issues that every congregation, every man of God who intends to build a people of power and grace must ensure that somewhere in their growth process, these foundational truths are captured in their experiences. Lack of the understanding of these things will give the devil an edge over the believer. 
are we together then the ministry of the word of god this is a doctrinal truth that we must understand what is the value of the word of god the average believer studies the bible studies scripture and exposes himself to spiritual truth just to ease the guilt of not looking spiritual or to conform to a religious ritual the bible talks about the logos of god john 1 verse 1 it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god very powerful scripture so you have to understand what the word of god is because the bible tells us that man shall not live by bread alone but that he must live by every truth that proceeds from the mouth of god then the ministry of the holy spirit listen let me tell you there are so many believers who want to walk in the reality of the power and the glory of god many sincere preachers many in the body they want to enjoy certain levels of victory but they have not been taught constructively taught about the person and the ministry of the holy spirit even though the holy spirit plays a very vital role in salvation there is a separate encounter with the person and the office of the holy spirit are we together then we talk about kingdom living we now begin to bring believers into the revelation of the kingdom jesus began to talk to us about the kingdom what is the kingdom the character of the kingdom i'm showing you doctrinal truths that if ignored there is no church happening i guarantee you then kingdom concepts like faith kingdom concepts like hope like love like peace these are very powerful truths that must be taught the believer you have to understand what the peace of god is what it means to live and walk in love the power of hope the power of faith the bible talks about faith being a shield it says wherein with it will be able to quench every fiery dart of the enemy then we now come into subjects of the realm of the spirit the reality of the satanic kingdom that has been so ignored by many people in an attempt to show the excellency of the reality of the finished work of christ we have ignored the fact that there is a devil roaming around our horizon and the bible tells us to not be ignorant of his devices this is where truths that deal and relate with spiritual warfare the reality of the satanic kingdom the fact that there are real demons who are out to sabotage the purposes of god in the life of the saints and that if the saints are not equipped with the requisite level of spiritual intelligence then we may not be able to walk in victory are we together then we come to the ministry of prayer prayer was such a powerful subject that the disciples came to jesus and said teach us to pray so you don't just learn prayer by praying alone you are taught how to pray their issue was not prayerlessness their issue was inaccurate prayer there was something about the prayer of jesus and the result that came from his prayer and they said teach us to pray then he began to teach them he says when you pray pray thus he didn't just say recite these words it's a spiritual formula abba father when you pray pray with the acknowledgement that there is a source a sustainer a defender then he says which art in heaven that means you will need faith in your prayer because it's not in your domain you are interacting with two realms then hallowed be your name that you come to him with the spirit of reverence your kingdom come prioritize the kingdom because if the kingdom comes many things you want to ask for will no longer be needed jesus is teaching prayer so that when you go to the place of prayer you are not just shadow boxing and dissipating spiritual energy that cannot produce results this is largely what we do just because we dissipate a lot of spiritual energy we convince ourselves that on the strength of the enormity of the energy that is dissipated we are making contact in the spirit it may not be so one man prayed and a territory was shot it was it was deprived of rain one correct prayer 
then we talk about the subject of kingdom advancement listen if you're a man of God here you may want to write some of these things down and build a catalog of your spiritual your mentorship system to the members this this is these are the truths that members should come to receive they are not opinions they are doctrines these are the truths the pillars upon which the maturity of the saints depend on kingdom advance if believers are not king are not taught kingdom advance we are going to live purposeless lives acquiring things that have no eternal value what gives credence to subjects like prosperity and the rest is kingdom subjects like prosperity health advancement success they find their correct bearing when they are the subjects are dealt with with respect to kingdom if kingdom is not in view it is risky and dangerous even destructive to mentor people and teach them these things because all of these things are spiritual arsenals that were supposed to help the believer to become efficient to an end the end is thy kingdom come are we still together then we talk about subjects like purpose and destiny never downplay the fact that believers need to find fulfillment in their lives they will not indefinitely just be career people they will not indefinitely just be church goers for many years sooner or later they will have to confront the subject of meaning what is my life about nobody will waste his time indefinitely no matter how sincere you are as a man of god as a preacher as a spiritual platform you must be able to mentor the people to find meaning for their lives it is lack of meaning that exposes people to all kinds of violence when people do not live for a cause that is bigger than their needs they can become prey to the devil purpose and destiny very powerful it defines the coordinate for your focus it gives you discipline it helps to channel your energy constructively so you wake up in the morning justifiably so and you sleep late you sleep in the night with joy in your heart knowing that you're making constructive advancement then we have to talk about truths like the end times the reality of the afterlife it's a subject that many people may not want to touch the bible says if our hope is only in this life this world it says we are of all men most miserable to understand the gravity of that statement you have to examine how miserable men look because the bible says you have a miserable man at any level is not a good sight and then the bible says you are of all men most miserable it is true that jesus is coming back and my goodness there are all kinds of doctrinal and theological and archaeological arguments as to it believers must be able to find comfort why because in a congregation like this sincerely speaking even though it is not our intention as time progresses people will lose will lose loved ones is that true people will have to mourn loved ones either because their time is up or for some reason and there must be a doctrinal foundation that gives them strength at that point it takes more than an impulsive comfort for two three days people must derive sustainable strength on a revelation of what happens after this life it is on the strength of that you can now say like paul for for me to live is christ and to die is gain so if you declare long life is not out of fear it's because you need time to make kingdom come happen but if at all the flight comes you go with joy knowing that you have cheated death already is god helping us these are the doctrinal truths these are like spiritual classes schools of the spirit that you have to pass through you cannot go through these things and still be weak and be tossed to and fro the bible says it is for this that the bible says ephesians chapter 4 when you read from verse 10 to this end the bible says he gave unto some apostles and prophets evangelists pastors teachers for the maturing the equipping of the saints that the saints now being matured will do the work of the ministry to the end that will attain that stature in the spirit it says not tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive stability comes through doctrine 
then we will not also neglect matters of life like the economic system of the kingdom look at me did you know that the kingdom of God has an economic system that must be studied there are different systems all across this cosmos but God has his economic system that means there is a kingdom provision for the welfare of the saints it is irresponsible and I submit to you with all due respect it is irresponsible for a man of God to have the privilege of being with a congregation for many years and not expose them to the economic system of the kingdom because these are matters of life it's not just about prayer and trusting God to come. There are school fees to be paid. There are real issues that pertain unto life. And if believers are not taught, they will have to adopt any option that is available. And most of the options, you would have to trade your soul in exchange. So he said, what shall it profit a man if you will gain? These are business languages. Gain the world and lose your soul. It says, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. There is an economic system designed for the kingdom. And I will respectfully observe that the challenge with the body of Christ is that most times our doctrines are inaccurately communicated. That means it is it's, it's garnished with a plethora of imbalances. So on one hand, we have people who teach believers, for instance, that all it takes to prosper is just to focus on the spiritual laws of tithing and giving and sowing. And that is wonderful. There is a place for that. And then they ignore the fact that there are principles of value and productivity that synergize themselves together to make believers exceptional. So believers continue to obey the spiritual laws. The spiritual laws are responsible for the arrival of the blessings, but the natural laws are they arrive, they are responsible for the sustenance. If you do not know this, you will keep having short-lived testimonies. One breakthrough, and then after five years, another one comes. The economic system of the kingdom. Then, of course, we have to teach believers on things that relate to relationships, family life. We are relational beings. The command, be fruitful, is a very serious command. Be fruitful there does not just mean have children. Be fruitful means be relational. Because everything multiplies through relationships. Your business, your job, your work with God. And until we understand principles of relationship, Prophecy will keep bringing opportunities that lack of knowledge of relationships will keep canceling out of believers' lives. There are many people who receive prophetic words. May God connect you to destiny helpers. May God lift you. They say amen. But not understanding the requisite principles for maintaining and attracting relationships. They will be spiritual, pray in tongues. But if you do not have this as a pastor, as a man of God, you will never have sustainable membership. Because the membership are first people before your members. And there are, there, there are principles, not only spiritual principles, psychological principles that must be in place. Let me tell you, human beings are not stupid. They will not indefinitely be loyal to someone and a cause without an interplay of these truths. If you are with me, say amen. Probably God is revealing to someone right now. This is just an introduction. Whilst you've heard me speak, God is telling you, you see the area you have ignored. The area of loophole, the area of, of ignorance, the area of carelessness in your life becomes the access point of Satan. Now, we celebrated wonderful testimonies here from people who miraculously, within a week, Look, the wonder-working power of God. Now, the anointing has played its own course. It's left for them to understand the principles of relationship now to sustain that breakthrough. Is that true? So, receiving a prophetic word is not enough. You have to be equipped with truths like the law of honor to understand these principles. So, when you say a believer is matured, you don't just mean he has been around spiritual things for a long time no it means that he has actively been mentored believers must submit themselves to mentorship not the idea of mentorship we have in our world today 
that has become an evil and a destructive usurping of the right and the will of men I'm talking of mentorship a system where you submit yourself to a body of spiritual truth to the end that you'll be edified and be matured this is the assignment of doctrine are we blessed to see you high and lifted up you are shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 here's the prayer open the eyes of my heart lord is a real prayer open the eyes of my heart I want to see you. I want to see you. Hallelujah. Two men were with the resurrected Christ on the way to Emmaus. Just because they were at proximity with the word did not mean that they had an encounter. You can be close to spiritual things for many years and convince yourself that just because you are around spiritual things you are growing they were with jesus and yet did not recognize him but the bible says when the bed was broken their eyes open can you pray whilst you are seated lord open my eyes let this be a journey of transformation let this be a journey of growth please pray hallelujah praise the name of the Lord so for tonight just spare me a few minutes and we're done listen week in week out when you come did you know why we pray that God should bring people we don't pray for people just to celebrate a crowd it's more than that it's a passion to reach as many people there are 3.2 million people demographically speaking in this city if we're unable to reach at least 300,000 people with the truth of God's word to mature them, we're wasting your time and we're wasting God's time. <laughs> yes. You have to believe this. So when you are dragging someone to church, you are not trying to help a ministry grow. You are looking at him and like a doctor. You can scan through his life. While he comes to say, my life, you can see the spiritual gaps. You, you know the laws he's breaking in an instant. And you know if God does not help this man, just agreeing and praying will not solve the problem. Because the truths that this person needs to learn are many. It is on the, that is what sponsors your compassion. When you draw someone to the house of God, you are already excited because more than an instant miracle, he now has the opportunity to be immersed in this spiritual truth. So he leaves that service with an enlightened understanding and he will thank you for it. While the word of God is coming, he can see the gaps in his life. There is a grace given to a man that can open the eyes of men. It's the grace that causes all men to see. So you can see your life in light of this truth and you can say wow i now see why my church is not growing it's not because i'm not from this city i now see this may be what i may be doing wrong and then because you are told to receive with meekness the engrafted word you are not ashamed of god exposing your area of growth it's like saying you are better today than you were yesterday and you receive it with truth then you go back like the foxes of samson and you will do mighty and terrible things for the kingdom this is what i seek by the spirit of god that will happen in our lives that week in let me tell you the truth i give you a guarantee if you come here week in week out and you cannot constructively measure your spiritual growth i am wasting your time please look for something important and do with your life Are we together many times we teach that all you need one encounter with the word is all you need 
that's a very sincere statement but that's incomplete many people have encountered the word for many years it is the truth that is accurately taught that you receive with understanding and you engage appropriately that produces for you not the truth available access to truth does not transform no it must be accurately taught then it must be understood then it must be received by faith the principles contained therein applied diligently then you can commit God's integrity to perform hallelujah let's talk about spiritual growth tonight let's start from there where we're starting from the very foundation this is a new work and so we'll just start and trust God for grace to build us as far as he can help us if we're together say amen first Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11 please let's rush we have to trust God for grace to be very fast tonight and then we pray first Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 11 we're discussing the subject of spiritual growth please read with me if you can see it projected inside and outside ready read when I was a child aha uh -huh, I speak as a child I understood as a child I thought as a child but when I became a man I put away childish things please keep that scripture there Paul is admonishing the church in Corinth part of his apostolic ministry and he's talking about the characteristic features that represent childishness in the kingdom that you know a child number one by how you speak you know a child number two by your level of spiritual understanding are we together you know a child by your thought process because your life is a reflection of your thoughts so we can piece this together and accurately gauge the spiritual level of a man the way that you speak your degree of comprehension and the way you think the way you process spiritual things when I was a child he said this also talks about transition when I was once upon a time he was a child this is a very powerful message because it means men can grow it's a it's a revelation I can come out of my former self into a new version of me that means the version you saw last week while you are talking about that one I have grown you are talking about the version that cannot heal the sick you are talking about the version that is ignorant and that we can evolve into superior dimensions of ourselves in this kingdom very powerful so you can see one who is weak he may even come out for salvation prayer and you watch that person and you're like wow when is this guy going to understand spiritual things just give the person the atmosphere of growth and sometimes as little as weeks under a very correct system of growth you will be surprised what will happen to that person when I was a child I spoke like a child understood as a child and I thought as a child but when I became a man what happened I pushed childish things childish speaking childish understanding childish thinking if you're with me say amen write this down please growth refers to increase in size increase in capacity increase in convictions increase in resources growth refers to increase of all kinds increase in size for instance increase in capacity increase in convictions increase in resources God expects believers to grow the Bible is full of um, admonishments for believers to grow God desires that we grow biologically God desires that we grow intellectually God desires that we grow career wise for career people God desires that we grow financially like we spoke about earlier on but for this for tonight the subject of focus is spiritual growth Luke chapter 2 and verse 52 the Bible says and Jesus grew or he increased Luke chapter 2 and verse 52 and Jesus increased the Bible says Jesus your Jesus had to grow he increased in wisdom in stature and in favor with God and with man hallelujah write this down please 
spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a Christian not necessarily Luke chapter 11 and verse 52 spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a Christian just because you gave your life to Jesus in 1990 or 2000 or 2010 the the passage of time does not necessarily equate spiritual growth listen to this Jesus is speaking to the scribes he says woe to you lawyers for you have taken the key of knowledge you've been here for a long time you have refused to enter yourself and you have stopped others from entering most times we pride ourselves just because we have memory of the day that we came out to make an altar call and you hear people say things like i have been a christian for 20 years now that's worth being uh, that's worth um our applause i'm not downplaying it but i'm saying just because you gave your life to christ it's like someone who bought a car in 2000 and just because a car is in his house he tells you he's a driver no the presence of a car does not necessarily mean the ability to drive spiritual growth is not determined by how long you have been a christian write this point again spiritual growth is not necessarily determined by church attendance and observance of religious activities spiritual growth is not necessarily determined by church attendance and observance of spiritual activities second timothy chapter 3 and verse 7 that means just because you've been around church for a long time and you've been engaging in spiritual activities it does not necessarily mean that you are growing spiritually paul was teaching his son timothy doctrine and he said there are a kind of people who are ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth wow preach preacher wow wonderful and just because you've been falling under the anointing for a long time just because you've been around crusades you've been around great programs when they say who are those who have been in church for a long time you will stand up but when we look through your life we do not see the indices that represent spiritual growth is god helping us there is a tragedy please look up there is a consequence for not contending for spiritual growth if you are not exposed to the consequences of remaining a child in the spirit you will not aspire for higher dimensions because you see many times and depending on what kind of spiritual platform we're exposed to many times we find ourselves in situations where we are not encouraged to press into god it's like the most important thing is to give your life to jesus like we say and the moment you have received jesus that's all right after all whatever it is it is heaven there are severe consequences for remaining at that level biologically speaking mothers when you give birth to a child you don't flog that child from day one for not walking you give him some allowance but after a year two years three years you find out your child cannot walk your child cannot talk that becomes a medical issue is that true i have put down here three three tragedies that will befall any believer who does not contend for spiritual growth please walk with me let's hurry up is god blessing us tonight number one the first tragedy that befalls a believer who does not contend for growth is in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 the Bible says having their understanding darkened look up please it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart do you know what this means that means even though you have received the zoe life watch this you have received the life of god it does not mean it will be manifest in your life automatically the riches of that which you have received that resides in christ is released through knowledge and if you do not contend for spiritual growth you may never actualize in experience the potentials that are captured in this life so 
true believers come this is my great generals just come close to me by the way this is Sam ladies and gentlemen for many of you you've heard me say Sam and those of you who have been blessed by the song you reign Elohim here's the person who wrote the song thank you hallelujah now watch this let me have your attention again watch this now did you know that these guys can be born again at the same time are we together filled with the Holy Spirit at the same time but this man may be subject to a very constructive mentorship system and five years down the line you will see the quality of his Christian experience all wise you will see that the reality the riches the 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 manifestation of that life that he has so received when you look at it you will see the quality of his life this man even though truly he's given his life to Christ you do not see evidences that demonstrate the reality of the victory of Christ in his life the difference is not the love of God the same Lord is rich unto all the difference is that one has submitted to a system that makes for growth whereas the other one has been stunted or wallowing around in religion decree and declare in the name of Jesus say after me in the name of Jesus I obtain grace to grow spiritually so the potential the potential that this life of God that we have this divine life is released as we grow if you do not grow it will only remain in theory that you are a partaker of this divine life but nothing in your life will show forth the excellency of that victory that is in Christ are we together tragedy number two what happens to a believer who refuses to contend for growth Galatians chapter 4 and verse 1 Galatians chapter 4 and verse 1 now I say that an heir an heir means a partaker of a throne a, a, a benefactor of an inheritance but for as long as he is a child he is no different from a servant some version says slave even though potentially he was designed to be Lord of all look up please the Bible says if you do not grow your experience as one who is in the kingdom and one who is outside the kingdom will be no different does it make sense to you why believers receive the same result as unbelievers it is because just receiving the life of Christ and not contending for growth your results will not change the dynamics that make your life to release the victory that is in Christ experientially is only released at the instance of growth oh, 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 oh. Tragedy number three. What is the third tragedy for refusing to contend for spiritual growth? Is found in Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 11. Please give it to us. Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 11. Watch this now. Paul again is teaching. He said, Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing that you are dull of hearing. We're reading to verse 14, verse 12 now. It says, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles or the doctrines of God, and have become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. 13. For everyone that useth milk, everyone that is a child, is what? Unskillful. Look up. Let me explain what this means to you. When you watch a consultant, when he looks at a patient, while the patient is talking, all of a sudden, the, the myriads of medical truths that he knows, everything is working in an instant. He looks at this and says, oh, I remember. There, 
we have one in a million of these cases however i think i know what to do about it on the strength of his mastery a student doctor can look at that and crack his brain and the information there is limited so he can do his best although he's a doctor in the making he can even be a fresh graduate and not be able to do much this is what it means to be unskillful so if you do not grow spiritually you can't be a blessing because when people speak to you you don't know what law they are violating and how to help them so you begin to come up with sympathetic statements like one day go better and the bible says you are unskillful you are not like one who is moving with uncanny mastery when you grow spiritually if a family calls you as a man of god we're in trouble what is the trouble all doors are closed uh -huh, immediately the scriptures that will bail them out comes to you you can almost tell them i know what is wrong i know what is wrong it's powerful to know how to help people not just how to sympathize with people you are a blessing to the degree to which you can help someone comes to you now and says i hear that you are a member of this great ministry nothing is working in my life delays there is there's no restoration the moment you hear restoration you know all through scripture everywhere there were losses is the prophetic that brought it back so restoration is exclusively the ministry of the prophetic so you don't just tell that person let's pray god help him that's a careless prayer you seek to introduce him to a true prophetic voice they are taken for a prayer and none say it restore this is what it means to be skillful someone comes to you and says i am gifted i'm a graduate but doors are not opening up i have a business and you know exactly what is there because you see james 2 26 says a body without a spirit is dead the business is a body where is the spirit that gives it life so you know what to introduce are you getting blessed if you refuse to grow spiritually you become unskillful you cannot help yourself and you cannot help people this is the tragedy with the poor is responsible for what outcome mastery in the spirit is to be able to connect spiritual laws and their desired outcomes so when you see people and they cry you know what spiritual law to help them with like a doctor when a patient says i'm running temperature and um, i've not been able to eat i even threw up you are not a doctor but help me guess what you think is wrong who taught you that although you are not a doctor notice you did not say Ronnie's stomach but don't you know that cholera he also vomits why didn't you say cholera because there are certain things you have been taught through experience that when a patient behaves like this this is how to help the person this can happen to you spiritually listen to me I'm teaching you this so after the grace some of you will run home and say come I found what the problem is I know exactly why this family is not rising yes sir yes sir with accuracy you can know when mama comes to say are you seeing this I went to bed and I had a dream I saw someone speaking to me and he said in this family for the last hundred years nobody has risen and everyone is putting their hand on their head and you now join them what is the excellency of your spiritual investment but the issue is not just saying let's pray don't mind the devil you say that thing you would die like a chicken because many people have arrogantly made bold claims don't stand before Pharaoh until you see the burning bush if you have not seen the burning bush leave pharaoh alone your encounter with the burning bush is what supplies the strength and stamina you can stand before pharaoh and say thus say yet not me the one i met let my people go because pharaoh is stubborn god does not hide the fact that pharaoh is stubborn he will say oh god spoke go mm -mm. he will say who is that you have to show him a token of your encounter that I really met him so you don't talk like people who are not born again when believers are lamenting what is wrong 
you go to scripture what are the truths the assignment of men of God is to expose you to the various doctrinal bodies of truth that equip you so that you are equipped with sufficient spiritual arsenals on the strength of that you can now go if you are in your office and someone beats his chest and say except I am not this you will not rise you don't need to start talking as if you are not born ah, mm, leave him in peace that man you see you should even be pitying him while he's speaking based on what you know if you actually engage what you know you know that it will cause more destruction for that man so you will search which one can manage the situation and leave the man as a witness listen sit down please don't be excited for nothing look at me this is how dominion is produced dominion is not just an impartation is the resultant effect of your comprehending the mysteries of the kingdom you surround yourself with the principles of the kingdom like chariots they make you a wonder to behold so when you say you are matured in the spirit it's not just by physical stature it's not by the huskiness of the voice it's on the strength of the spiritual arsenals you have so pieced together you have fine-tuned them they are like weapons of war you shoot them with the accuracy of the benjamins one sling and goliath goes down low 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory Cover us with your wings. Go, go, go like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory. Cover us with your wings. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you